Hello and welcome to Pi Data Global 2021. My name is Natalie and I'm very happy to be here and to be your host for this session. I would like to now welcome um, Francesco Lessig to our session and he will be talking about Darts for Time series forecasting. Francesco is a data scientist at Unit 8 with experience in ML AI projects in various industries, such as finance, pharma, and energy. During his time at Unit 8, he has also had the opportunity to become one of the main contributors to the DATS open source library. And with that, I will give the floor to Francesco. Thank you so much for joining us today. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, today, we're going to be presenting DARTS, me and Julien. And uh, let me jump right into the intro. So before we start presenting darts, I would actually briefly like to say a few things about forecasting in general. So why is forecasting important? To emphasize the universality of this class of problems, let me walk you through three simple examples from different industries. So for instance, um, one important question that a retail corporation needs to answer is, how much of each product should they buy to make sure the demands of the customers are met? Or similarly, considering that energy storage is still in its infancy, an energy company has to match the energy demand with its production as closely as possible. So they need to know what the demand will look like, but also have an estimate of what various power plants will be able to produce. And uh, this is not always clear, I think for solar, for example. Uh, finally, an internet service provider must have enough infrastructure in place to support peak network usage. New resources cannot be installed in a matter of seconds. So again, they need an estimate of what the future is going to look like. And in this case, uh, that is in terms of network traffic. And in all of these areas, we have plenty of information about the past, but we need to know what the future is going to look like. In other words, we want forecasts. And more concretely, these problems can be framed as time series forecasting problems. So what is time series forecasting? As most of you probably already know, a time series is simply a list of values indexed in chronological order where the space in between time indices is constant. And these values could represent anything from world population per year to the hourly exchange rate between US dollar and Euro, for example. Uh, the time series you see here actually repre represents the daily energy production of a hydroelectric, hydroelectric plant. Uh, most of the time, these types of data extend up to the present moment. And uh, to speculate about the trajectory of a time series beyond the present would be time series forecasting. So the solution to all the problems we talked about before could in some form be solved if we were able to perform accurate time series forecasting. And just to be a bit more precise, when talking about a model that produces a forecast, we are referring to a function that can take both the history of the target variable itself, as well as other external data into account. But while many problems can easily be framed as time series forecasting problems, not all of them are necessarily solvable. So the time series you want to forecast must contain a real signal. And it is important that you know which factors influence the signal, whether that's uh, the target itself or other uh, factors that could influence it. If, uh, if you know that you have the necessary variables, then there's a good chance that by using the right forecasting model, at least some of the variance of your data can be predicted into the future. And people have been working on these kinds of models for decades now, and there's a wide range of possible approaches. And uh, luckily for you, we have developed a library that integrates many of the best approaches to date into a unified ecosystem. So enter DARTS, our Python library for easy manipulation and forecasting of time series. And the focus of the library, and in particular of this presentation, is the forecasting part. So the main function of DARTS is to go from a historical time series like the one you saw before to a forecast of that quantity into the future. Of course, there are countless variations of this problem and multiple ways to approach it. But before we delve into all the different ways you can use DARTS to tackle these forecasting problems, let me outline some of the key principles that guided 
and still do guide the way we develop darts. So first, darts is built around a time series class. Uh, this is the currency of darts, you could say, and it provides an interface that is optimi optimized for forecasting. Second, forecasting models in darts are unified by a simple fit and predict interface as seen, for example, in scikit-learn. So this means that pipelines built in DARS are very modular and different forecasting models can be easily interchanged. Third, we think it's important to provide both complex state-of-the-art models and to sort of keep up with uh, the current research, but at the same time, uh, maintain solid statistical approaches because we believe complex or models are powerful, but they should always be used alongside reasonable uh, baselines that are more simple. And lastly, we really want darts to be easy to use. Uh, two examples for this are uh, intuitive interfaces and reasonable default parameters. And you'll see more about what this means later on. So before I wrap up this introduction, I want to give you a rough idea of all the tools that darts has to offer because we will not have time to talk about all of them today. And don't worry about reading every single text box here. I just want to make the point that while the heart of darts is definitely the forecasting part, it also comes with all the other relevant functionality required before and after forecasting. Essentially, our package offers an end-to-end -to -end toolbox that goes from data discovery to pre-processing to forecasting and all the way to model evaluation. So now I would like to give you an overview of the basic DARTS workflow. And let's explore the most fundamental functionalities of the library using an example. So this time series represents monthly milk production per cow in pounds. And we want to create a model that takes the training series, which is shown in black, and produces a forecast for the validation series in blue. So the goal is to produce a forecast that is as close as possible to the original series. And in the following slides, we will get closer and closer to that goal as we step through the different core functionalities of darts. So first of all, the time series object, it is the main abstraction provided by darts and we can easily instantiate one, uh, for example, from a CSV file, but there are many other starting points we could take uh, for example, NumPy arrays, data frames, and so on. So this class provides many useful methods for manipulating and visualizing time series objects. Under the hood, we're using an X-Array data array object to store the actual data. To create subsequences to fit and validate our model on, we can simply call the split after method of the time series class. One way to parameterize this function is to provide the fraction of points we want in the first subsequence. Uh, and now that we have a training sequence, we can use one of the many forecast one of the many forecasting models DARS has to offer. One classic model is exponential smoothing. We can easily instantiate our model, fit it, and create a forecast in three simple lines of code. The predict function simply accepts the number of time steps after the end of the input series for which we want to create a forecast. And by examining our forecast visually on the right side, we can see that we have a model that, although not perfect, makes use of the trend and seasonality of the input sequence and extrapolates them into the future. Uh, one of the main advantages of using darts is that we offer a wide array of different forecasting models to choose from. So let's go ahead and try another one. So this model is coral theta and like exponential smoothing, it sort of falls into the category of more simple statistical forecasting models. And like before, in three lines of code, we can get a forecast that looks fairly decent, at least visually. What you might've noticed in both models so far is that we didn't define any settings or hyperparameters for the models. As mentioned earlier, when uh, talking about the principles behind darts, we put a lot of emphasis on assigning reasonable default parameters to models. So usually even without specifying anything about a model when creating it, there's a good chance that you can already obtain a decent result out of the box. 
But of course, we also provide the option for more control to the user. So in the case of the theta model, for instance, we can manually set the theta parameter, which will lead to a different model behavior. And here we can manually set it to one. And again, judging the forecast visually, guess it looks pretty okay, but actually slightly worse than the default model. So we will stick to the previous one. But of course we have to be a bit more rigorous here when judging the quality of predictions. So how can we tell which model is better? And for this, DARTS provides a wide range of different metrics, which given a forecast and the ground truth, give us scalar, a scalar value that indicates the quality of a forecast. For instance, we can use the MAPE metric, which stands for mean absolute percentage error, which I guess should be self-explanatory what it is. And, uh, or we can use the MASE metric, which stands for mean absolute scaled error. So this is a metric uh, with many desirable properties for time series forecasting specifically. Uh, and it actually requires an additional parameter too. So, there's uh, some variation within these metrics and how they're used. Uh, but let's just stick to MAP for now. So after computing the score for both forecasts, we can see that theta is slightly better than exponential smoothing, which means that so far, this is our winner. We have to be careful here, though. If we keep trying out different models and parameters for this setup, we are going to overfit to this specific train validation split. But luckily, there's a better way in DARTS to evaluate different models and hyperparameters. So in a classical ML setting, we could do something like randomized cross-validation. However, in a time series forecasting paradigm, this is problematic for several reasons. So instead, what we should do is something called historical forecasting. In essence, we ask ourselves the question of, how a model would have performed if it had been repeatedly used for producing predictions in the past. Actually, DARTS has two functions, historical forecast and backtest. The only difference here is that um, the former returns the actual forecast, while backtest goes one step further and produces error metrics uh, directly. But for now, we'll just use the historical forecast method. So the way it works is this. So we start with a subsequence at the start of our time series as the initial training sequence and predict the next few elements. Then we extend our training sequence by a number of time steps and again produce a prediction, which lies a bit more in the future than the previous one. And we basically repeat this until we reach the end of the time series. So every forecasting model in DARTS has this historical forecast method and as you can see on the left side, it is very simple to use it and to produce historical predictions as seen on the right side. So we can use this method to better evaluate different models and hyperparameter combinations. Um, and we want to use this functionality to try out uh, many different combinations and also different models, but rather than doing this manually, uh, at least the hyperparameter part, uh, we can use our grid search method to automate this process. So to do this, we simply define the parameter space in which we want to search over in a dictionary. <clears throat> and then we call the grid search function on the model class that we want to optimize. Here, we only pass the training series to the grid search function to avoid overfitting on the validation set. So, on the left, you see the prediction we obtained from the default data model uh, earlier. And to the right, you see the performance obtained by the optimized data model, uh, which was returned by the grid search function. So you can see we're able to further improve the performance without looking at the validation set. So this would uh, be our final winner for this very brief demonstration. And this all, of course, was a very simple and idealized example in most real world situations. It will not be this easy to deal uh, with forecasts. So you might need some additional tools uh, to actually get good results on more complex problems. So uh, now I would like to pass the mic to Julien to introduce some of these more advanced functionalities of the DARS library. Uh, and I stop sharing. All right. Thank you, Francesco. <clears throat> I hope everyone can hear me um, and see my screen. Uh, please scream <laughs> if that's not the case. 
All right, so I want to uh, give an overview of some of the more advanced features that we are uh, also proposing in Dart. So one of the most important things we're trying to do here is uh, providing uh, modern machine learning functionalities for time series. And what does that mean? So on the one hand, uh, we want uh, both support for classical machine learning and deep learning models. So you know, classical machine learning means uh, in Darts, you can plug in your favorite, uh, you know, psychic learn regressors, for instance, and get forecasts based on that. But also, uh, we offer a collection of uh, state-of-the-art deep learning models, and we are always trying to also follow the research and add more models. Uh, but most of these models, most of the time, they don't work really well. They are really not meant to be trained on small data sets they require large data sets and many time series to be trained on. So I think this is really key. Uh, here we have to depart a bit from the classical notions of forecasting where you, know, you would only have the setup where you train one model on one time series and then you use this one model to forecast the future of this one time series. Here, with this sort of, uh, in this sort of, 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 of setup, we would like train big models on big data set. And in darts, each time series uh, object can also contain several dimensions. So it doesn't have to be just you know, a sequence of scalar values over time, but it can really be a sequence of, of vector values over time. Um, we also have support for uh, using past and future data as input to the models. And I will also say a few words about that later. And finally, I'll also quickly show how uh, probabilistic forecasting is done in darts because this is also something very important. All right, so first I want to demo a little bit uh, what we call sometimes meta learning or this ability to train one model on a big data set of time series. So here, uh, actually for this example, I, I took 48,000 time series, monthly time series from a data set called the M4 data set. And uh, uh, these time series have not much to do with each other. And I actually, I don't even know what they are. So I just know that they are monthly series. Uh, I showed here, I plot uh, four of them that I selected more or less at random. And you can see that some of them have um, downward trend, others have upward trend, some have you know strong seasonality. Uh, others are like looking more like random walks. Um, but still, uh, we'll try to fit one model on all of them. So here, um, I took this model uh, called NBeats, which was released, uh, which was published one or two years ago and is available in Darts. Um, and the way to train it on this whole data set looks like this. So basically it's the same as for fitting on one single series, um, except that here my, my variable all train series that you can see here is, uh, is a sequence of uh, 48,000 time series. Actually, it's, um, in that case, it's, it's simply a list because everything fits in memory, but I could also be a little bit more sophisticated and have my own sequence that would do, for instance, lazy loading or something like this if the data set is really too big. Um, and uh, then what I do is I ask this model to predict, to forecast the future of the air train series, which is the, the series of the air passengers traffic. Um, and this series is not in the training set. So the model has never seen it before. And um, this is what I get. So if it loads, <laughs> all right. Um, this is what I get. So the forecast is quite good. Actually, it's maybe, it's probably not the best forecast ever that you could get for this series, but it's very decent. And I think the really, really cool thing here is that uh, there is sort of uh, kind of zero shot uh, learning going on because Again, the, the, this model has never been trained, especially on this series. It, it just has seen the beginning of the series, like as a prompt kind of. And that means we can use this model in inference mode only uh, without training and expect sometimes in some cases, maybe decent performance, right? And this is nice because inference is fast. Like even on, I did this on my laptop and it takes just a few milliseconds to run. Um, other important thing is this uh, handling of past and future external data in darts. So here, the way we do it is basically we define three notions in darts. So first we have the target series that are shown here in green. 
And this is, by definition, this is what we want to forecast. And then uh, we are talking also about covariates. So covariates are those, the time series that um, contain maybe useful information, but we are not really interested in forecasting them. We just want to use them as inputs for the models. And here we distinguish between past covariates, which are um, unknown into the future. So for instance, things like measurements, they have to be measured typically, or future covariates, which are known in the future. Uh, so things like calendar events, you know, holidays, uh, weather forecasts, or some actions that you can take, for instance, uh, marketing campaigns or things like that. And the way it's handled in Dart is um, basically it's, it's model dependent, but um, some models support uh, past covariates and or future covariates. And we use these keywords, past covariates and future covariates. So that means as a user, uh, you always know whether you know your model will consume historic data only or historic and future data also. So that means that if you use future covariates, you know that at the prediction time, you will have also to provide the future values for those time series. All right. Um, last thing I want to show is this uh, probabilistic forecasting. Uh, this is also super important. And basically, that, that's about like getting kind of confidence intervals for, for the forecasts. So to kind of demo it here, I built this uh, synthetic time series, which is just a sine wave with uh, additive Gaussian noise uh, to it. And here, the noise itself has the vari variable uh, intensity that you can see at the bottom. So how can we go about uh, modeling and forecasting such a series? So first sort of naive option is to simply repeat the values that we have observed during the last season. But of course, this is too naive. It doesn't really work very well uh, because it simply repeats the values in the, in the history of the series and it kind of overfits completely to the noise. So it just repeats the noise. Um, here we could also use you know, sort of a simpler ARIMA model uh, which is, uh, you know, in that case, doing a pretty good job at smoothing the signal and uh, giving us point predictions. But we still have a problem because if you look, for instance, here, things are quite fine uh, in this place. We know that the, you know, the noise level is quite low and the forecast is quite good. But if you look here, uh, the noise level is high and we would somehow ideally want, you know, the model to sort of convey this notion of uh, uncertainty. So here, uh, we can do that in darts, and here I show an example with TCN model, which is one of the deep learning models in darts. And what I'm doing here is uh, mainly two things. So um, first, when I create a model, I'm uh, specifying a Gaussian likelihood, which is the form of the likelihood that would be fit by the model, in this case, Gaussian. Um, and when I predict, I ask for a certain number of samples, which I will explain later. It's used for doing uh, Monte Carlo sampling on the output. And by the way, you can also see that when I fit and I predict, I also actually specify uh, some past covariates, which are actually the noise intensity. So that helps. It's an external data. I'm not trying to forecast it, but it helps the model um, to capture the fact that the variance has a uh, you know, different frequency. So um, how do probabilistic forecasts work? So for uh, nearly all the deep learning models in Dart, uh, it works the same way. Basically, um, they, uh, they predict the, the parameters of some distributions that you choose, right? And that means that instead of um, fitting them with you know, mean squared loss or something like this, we are using uh, negative log likelihoods for these distributions or a variant of this. And um, a time series object is really a 3D object behind the scenes. So basically, the first dimension is the time. The second dimension is the component, so the, the different dimensions of the, in the case of multivariate time series. And the third dimension is um, stores these samples in the case of probabilistic or stochastic series. So basically, we can use that once we have the, you know, the parameters of the distributions as output of our models, we can sample trajectories. This gives us one time series object, a probabilistic time series. And this representation is really uh, very generic. It doesn't rely on any you know, sort of uh, parametric form or anything like that. It can really represent joint distributions over 
time and components uh, of our time series. And using these objects, then we can do, you know, uh, lots of things, for instance, like uh, getting the marginal quantiles and, and getting confidence intervals on some components. And I'm almost done, uh, <laughs> so no worries, we'll be on time. All right. Um, so uh, these are the list of likelihoods we have currently in darts. Uh, we have, I think, 16 of them. So, you know, I think this is quite a powerful tool because if you know that your data, for instance, is continuous or discrete, or positive, um, or you know, between zero and one, or maybe positive and summing to one, or something like this. Or if you know that it's heavier tail than Gaussian, for example, in this case, you can use maybe the Laplace or even the Cauchy likelihoods. You know, uh, so I think it's very useful as sort of a kind of inductive prior to your model. And also, we have a sort of a Bayesian component to it because. Uh, uh, you know, it's very easy also to specify prior values on the uh, for the parameters of those distributions. All right, so this concludes the talk. Um, and to kind of uh, wrap it up, I just want to say Dart tries to do two things. So it tries to be user friendly uh, and provide modern machine learning functionalities for time series. So yeah, please try it out. Uh, we have a pretty big backlog of things we want to add. It's not limited to forecasting, actually. So we're also planning to add some anomaly detection in there, for instance. And we welcome uh, you know, any sort of feedback and, and contributions. Thanks a lot for your attention. Uh, there is a question. Can you define static covert? Ah, yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, not at the moment, but soon, yes. So that's close to the top of our to-do list of things we we'll add. So right now, covariates have to be time series themselves, but we'll uh, we'll also add the possibility for that. So um, I think he question. also asked for a definition. Uh, so so basically, what we would mean with static covariates is something that would stay constant for a given time series. For instance. Um, you know, as opposed to being a time series itself, let's say you have a set of time series corresponding to different product sales, um, then a static covariate might be what category of product you're talking about. So yeah. for each, for any given time series, it stays constant, basically. Okay, um, a question from Christian. Is it possible to provide your on estimate estimators? Example, S S learn. Um, yes, so... Right. Yeah, so there is a, a model in Darts called the regression model, and it accepts any scikit learn like regressor that obey, you know, this fit predict signature and works on tabular data. So short answer is yes. Yeah. Okay. So unfortunately, our time is just about up. Thank you so much, um, Francesco and Julian, for your talk and for being part of PyData Global 2021. Yeah, thanks for having us. Bye bye.